morning everyone thanks for joining in today today i'm going to talk about a very special hernia called spigelian hernia or spigelian hernia maybe not many of you have heard about this hernia before it is a type of an abdominal hernia which appears on the outside of our belly or our tummy the reason i'm discussing it today because it is a very uncommon type of hernia in my entire career i have seen only 3 maybe when i have seen hundreds of inguinal hernias femoral hernias umbilical and epigastric hernias only 3 of these i have seen and all of these hernias are very very difficult to diagnose it's a challenge for a doctor to diagnose these hernias so we're going to discuss this briefly today to try and explain where the spigelian hernia comes from i have drawn a diagram of the abdomen so this is looking at our abdomen from the front our tummy from the front now there are three sets of muscles on each side of our tummy so we have all seen the six pack in the middle which is called the rectus abdominis muscle and it has got these tendinous intersection that we call in the middle in muscular people and people who are very slim you can easily see this muscle as a six pack muscle on each side there are three muscles on the left side and there are three muscles on the right side they are called the oblique muscles now where do these muscles attach at the top they are attached to our rib cage so that is our left side of the rib cage that is our right side of the rib cage and that is our breastbone up there this is our umbilicus or the belly button or the navel and this is our pelvic bone down here so all these muscles at the top attach to our either breastbone or the rib cage on each side and they go around the back and are attached to our ribs at the back or the spine and at the bottom they are attached to our pelvic bones now this anatomy is very important to understand to know where the spigelian hernia comes from these muscles all these muscles whether it is the rectus abdominis muscle or the six pack muscle they attach in the middle so this is a very strong part of our tummy in the midline this is called the linea alba linea means line alba means white so when surgeons operate this is quite easily visible as a white line in the middle of the tummy rectus abdominis right side and the rectus abdominis on the left side they come in the middle and they fuse over here all the way from the top to the bottom also the muscles on the side the obliques on the left side and the obliques on the right side is when they come to the side of the rectus abdominis muscle they change from a very fleshy muscle into a sheath sheath is like a sheet like a bed sheet but this bed sheet structure is quite strong but it has to be attached to somewhere so what it does it splits into two when it comes to the edge it splits the sheath comes like this and it splits into two one bit goes in the front of the muscle and one go bit goes behind the muscle so the front bit goes in front of this abdominal muscle the rectus abdominis muscle and one bit goes behind the rectus abdominis muscle this line on the side where it splits is called the linea semilunaris or line which looks like half moon because it's slightly curved like a half moon and this line over here is called the arcuate line this is just below our umbilicus or the navel so this is our umbilicus just below on each side about inch and inch or inch and a half below the umbilicus this line is called the arcuate line and this is where the linea semilunaris on each this side and this side meet the arcuate line is a weak spot in our tummy and i'll explain to you why it's a weak spot and this is where the spigelian hernia comes out from i think they are more common on the left side as compared to the right side the reason i don't know but the ones i have seen the three spigelian hernias in my practice they've all come from the left side 
now to explain why this is a weak spot we go to this diagram this is our spine now this is we are looking at the abdomen from the front now this is we are looking at the abdomen from below so this person is lying down so if this person lies down and we look at the tummy from below so spine is at the back and our breastbone is in the front yeah and our abdomen becomes like a cylinder like this yeah so this is what we are looking at so this rectus abdominis muscle the six pack muscle is in the front in the middle spine is at the back this is our rib and from the rib arise the three oblique muscles so these muscles they are three in number on each side so three on the left side three on the right side so there are the three muscles on the left side and there are the three muscles on the right side they start from the rib cage and goes in the front as you can see as they come to the side of the rectus abdominis muscle this muscle the sheath before it attaches to the middle it splits into two it goes in the front and also goes to the back of the rectus abdominis muscle so this area becomes very very strong because the sheath when it attaches in the middle is a very strong sheath and obviously it's not sheath of one muscle is the sheath of three muscles however this changes and where does it change it changes at the arcuate line that i discussed earlier so just a couple of inches below, below our umbilicus or our navel this structure changes and how does it change so at this line what happens that all the muscles when they fuse into the sheath instead of going behind the rectus abdominis muscle most of them go in front of the rectus abdominis muscle so this becomes a weak spot because the sheath from these or what we call the aponeurosis from these muscles are going all in the front and none at the back so at the back becomes a weak spot and this area is a weak spot through which the hernia this is a weak spot through which the hernia comes out if you want to know more about hernias what hernias are i've explained it in my video which i'll leave the link below also different type of hernias like epigastric hernias and umbilical hernias i've also got videos on it which you can watch at your own leisure so this is what happens in spagalian hernia this weak spot part of our intestine comes out into a little pocket and if you look at it from this direction this is the part of the intestine coming out but unlike most hernias in most abdominal hernias that intestine or whatever comes out in the hernia whether it's fat or intestine it usually comes out under the skin over here so you can feel the bulge under the skin in this case it comes out between the muscles so you can see it's coming out between through the muscles and this is what makes this hernia very difficult to diagnose because you cannot always feel the bulge and that bulge because of the strong muscles in the front is sometimes impossible to feel and because it's quite far up in the tummy wall so this is where the common hernias appear the groin hernias or inguinal hernias or femoral hernias which are the commonest type of hernias we get this hernia is quite far up and the only symptom patient has is pain they don't complain always about a bulge occasionally they can complain about a bulge but when they come to you you don't always feel a bulge if you put your hand on it and if you ask the patient to cough sometimes you can feel the pulse on your hand because cough increases the pressure in our tummy and makes the hernia bulge and you can feel it but you can't always feel the lump of the hernia and that makes this hernia very difficult to diagnose because it's coming out in a very tight spot and the muscles are quite strong there is a very high risk of complications with these hernias and the risk is obstruction or strangulation which means whatever is coming out of the hernia which is usually small intestine they can lose its blood supply and make the patient incredibly sick so how are spagalian hernia diagnosed 
as you know from my previous videos as well that most other hernias whether it's an epigastric hernia coming out of the epigastrium or an umbilical hernia coming out of our navel or a inguinal hernia or a femoral hernia they are mostly diagnosed with examination a doctor can examine a patient and can say nine out of ten times that this is a hernia however this is not always the case with spagalian hernia because these hernias are happening between the muscle layers they don't have a prominent bulge or a cough impulse like most hernias have and this is far more trickier to diagnose on examination alone hence these tests come in an ultrasound scan done by a good radiologist who suspects this hernia who knows what he is looking for a ct scan can pick up this hernia and an old fashioned x ray called a herniogram in which a die is put into the tummy patient is rolled on his front and the die is seen to go either into the spagalian fascia or into the inguinal canal all in all these hernias overall are very difficult to diagnose and many of them are mistaken instead of a spagalian hernia could be mistaken for an inguinal hernia the distance between the two is only a couple of inches last thing we are going to discuss is the treatment for spagalian hernia because these hernias have a high complication rate of obstruction and strangulation all these hernias should be fixed surgically the surgery can be done either with a cut on the tummy open operation or with a keyhole operation the defect of the hernia is either sutured or a mesh is put on to repair the hernia to strengthen the area i hope you found this video informative and if you did then please do give us a thumbs up and remember to like and subscribe thanks for watching until next time see you very soon take care